All right, welcome back. This is our second week's worth of material. And in this week, we're going to cover the securities markets. So I've broken down our lecture into three parts. First off, I'll talk a little bit about the markets and how we define a market. I'll discuss primary and secondary markets. Then I'll give you a good background on why firms undertake IPOs. Then in our second video, I'll discuss the primary and secondary markets for securities as well as important legislation and regulations. I'll also discuss market microstructure and innovations in trading. And then in our third part of this lecture series, I'll cover margin trading, short sales, and international stock trading. So let's get started. So when we talk about securities markets, these are the markets where securities like stocks and bonds are typically traded. So in the rest of this video, I'll discuss the differences between the primary and secondary markets. I'll talk about how firms actually raise capital initially, and then I'll walk through the basic benefits of IPOs, which we'll talk about way more in the next section. When we talk about markets, what we're referring to is a regular gathering of people for the purchase and sale of provisions, livestock, and other assets. Markets can take many forms. Direct search markets, where buyers and sellers seek each other out. We can have brokered markets, where brokers buy and sell securities on behalf of their clients. We have dealer markets, where dealers maintain inventories of assets from which they buy and sell. And we can have auction markets, where traders converge at one place to trade. Now, the primary market, or market for newly issued stocks and bonds, is often a brokered market. The creation and issuance, which is called underwriting, of new securities is usually handled by investment banks. The goal of the primary market is to raise capital for a firm or government in exchange for a stock or bond or other security. Secondary markets are the markets where existing securities are traded between investors. The New York Stock Exchange is the perfect example of a secondary market. Shares of stocks like Ford and GM have already been issued to the public, and those investors can sell their shares to other investors via the exchange. Typically, investors trade securities via a broker like Fidelity or E-Trade or some other uh, broker like that. Now, bonds, they can also trade on bond exchanges, which are a bit more underground. Now, let's talk about how firms raise capital in the primary market. There are several ways that firms can issue equity to investors. The first way is through a private placement. And in a private placement, essentially a firm is issuing equity directly to individual or institutional investors. So they get to have some discretion with respect to who is buying these shares of equity. The next way that a firm can raise capital is via a public offering. If this is the first time that the firm has issued shares to the public, then this is what we call an initial public offering, or IPO. If the firm's shares are already trading on a public stock exchange, but the firm wants to issue new shares, this would be called a secondary equity offering, or SEO. The last way that firms often raise new capital via stock issuance is through what's called a rights offering. And in this case, the firm allows current shareholders the opportunity to buy shares proportionate to their current ownership of the firm's shares. For example, if Berkshire Hathaway owns 5% of the shares outstanding of Coca-Cola, and Coca-Cola wants to raise $100 million via a rights offering, then the firm would allow Berkshire Hathaway to purchase up to 5% or $5 million worth of the firm's new shares. Firms can also raise capital via a debt issuance or a bank loan. When a firm receives a bank loan, this is often from one or several different commercial banks or other financial institutions. Firms can also receive a revolving credit line or revolver, which allows them to borrow up to a certain amount as long as the firm pays off their line of credit at least once every few months or every year. Firms that issue bonds can issue them privately or to the public. Many corporate bonds are traded on secondary bond exchanges like the NYSE bond market, or New York Stock Exchange bond market. Now let's talk about the stages of capital raising for firms in the United States. Initial funding is called seed funding. Seed funding is used to develop a prototype product, uh, which a firm will typically sell in small quantities. Once the firm exhausts its ability to raise capital from the initial investors, it's time to reach out to some angel investors and venture capital firms, or VC firms. Angel investors are high net worth individuals like the sharks on Shark Tank, 
who make investments in what we call de novo or new firms. Uh, venture capital firms are firms that pool assets and invest in private companies with the intention of taking the firm public or selling out at a later date, usually within about five to seven years. A firm might receive multiple rounds of funding from angel investors and VC firms before eventually undertaking an IPO or being acquired. In the United States, the largest firms are publicly traded. These include Walmart, Amazon, and ExxonMobil, if we're talking about by, by sales revenue. Uh, private firms are typically much smaller in terms of sales revenue, and this is because it's more difficult to raise ca new capital for capital budgeting projects from a smaller base. If I'm running Walmart, it's very easy to issue new shares via a secondary equity offering rather than going out to my existing investors if I'm running Cargill and trying to secure additional capital from them. Now, in the United States, privately held firms are restricted to a maximum of 499 shareholders. This can make it difficult to raise capital beyond a certain point. However, mutual funds that own shares only count as one shareholder. The big problem with owning shares of private firms is that these shares are very illiquid. As we discussed earlier, liquidity is defined as the ability to sell an asset quickly for close to its fair value. If you want to sell shares of a privately held firm, you often have to sell your shares to one of the current existing shareholders. If no one wants to buy those shares at the price that you want to sell them at, you often have to decrease the price. Now, one big benefit of private firms versus publicly traded firms is that private firms have very few reporting obligations. For example, I only reported the sales revenue of the firms on the previous slide because we don't know what the total assets or the total debt of privately held firms like Cargill or Albertsons are. Now, there are several benefits of converting from a privately held firm to a publicly traded firm. First, the IPO process will make international news and get people who haven't done business with the firm more interested in the firm's products. For example, when I found out that Beyond Meat was undertaking its IPO a while back, I decided to try one of the firm's burgers. In case you're wondering, it was pretty good. It tastes just like real meat, just a little smoother. The second benefit of an IPO is that the firm receives much needed capital. Firms can raise a large amount of capital via an IPO. When Saudi Aramco undertook its IPO, it raised $25.6 billion US. This was the largest IPO in history, but it illustrates the amount of cash that can be raised by going public. Public firms can also issue SEOs in order to raise additional cash. The third big benefit of undertaking an IPO is that the initial shareholders of the firm, the ones that own shares when the firm was private, can sell their shares and liquidate their position, which is what a lot of them will want to do. Usually, after an IPO, you have to wait six months for the firm's lockup period to expire. Selling shares after the lockup expiration date is one of the primary ways that venture capital firms and angel investors profit from their investment in a private company. The final benefit of going public is that the firm must submit regular paperwork to the SEC, much of which is made public via the SEC's Edgar website. While this might seem like a drawback initially, the increased transparency often incentivizes firm management to behave themselves. The decrease in information asymmetry from firm documents being made public also increases the value of the firm's shares. So you might be asking, why? Well, since this new information provides potential shareholders with greater knowledge of the firm's operations, it makes it easier for these potential investors to value the shares of this firm's stock. Now, what this really means is that these shareholders, there's a decrease in risk for them when they're deciding to buy shares. And so they're willing to, in many cases, pay more than they otherwise would. In this class, I'll walk through the IPO process and I'll show you how to collect data on IPOs. I'll discuss the most famous problems associated with IPOs next time, something called IPO underpricing. And if you have any questions, uh, please feel free to just ask me in class. We're going to do a lot with IPOs in this class. All right, so let's summarize. The primary market is the market for new securities. The secondary market is where investors who own those securities go to sell them. Now, firms that raise capital 
can do so from many different sources. Uh, equity and debt are what I talked about in this video, but there's many other ways. Next, we talked about the fact that equity can be issued to the public using an IPO or an SEO. And finally, we talked about the fact that IPOs make sense for large firms that want to expand for several different reasons. Usually, existing shareholders eventually will want to cash out, and so it makes sense that the firm goes public so that these shareholders have a market to sell their shares, or at least a larger market in which to sell their shares. So with that, I'm going to conclude, and if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Thank you.